Hello, YouTubers, students. Uh, in this uh, video number three, I want to illustrate how to go from a 2D sketch within mole view. This is in the uh, uh, public domain. You can access mole view online. And uh, it's a very efficient uh, platform by which you can draw a 2D chemical structure, convert it to 3D, and save it as a .mol. Then I'm going to show you how you can take that and export it over to Sidegress platform, which I do molecular modeling with. You see, Sidegress will not allow you really to do two-dimensional sketches, chemical structures. And when you're a beginning student, that's a very important thing to gain experience with. So let me show you uh, how this can work. So uh, I'll close up mole view. I bookmark that. And I'm going to X out this. Uh, that's a purine. I'm going to X that out. So let me draw a structure. I'll put a so-called benzene ring. And I'll put, uh, oh, another ring right here. And then I'm going to put a larger ring here. And I'm going to put uh, nitrogen. We'll make a heterocycle right there. And uh, let me put a couple of bonds over here. Okay. Now, let's take that and go to 3D. And there it is. Let me bring this over. And there is uh, the uh, three-dimensional ball and stick model, which can be interrogated by holding down the uh, L button of the mouse. And uh, what we're going to do with this is now save it. So we're going to go to model. Uh, and we're going to go to, let's see. Okay, 2D to 3D, which we've done. There we are. And then under Tools, Export Mole File. Now, it will simply call whatever you export to your desktop, moleview.mol. And uh, I do one at a time. And then when I go back, I replace uh, the structure I've worked with with a new one and simply call that mole view dot mole. So I'm going to keep that and I'll save that. And I'm using Firefox with my Mac and it's completed and I'll bring it to the desktop and replace the older one I had there. So it's there. Now, here it is. They're using the ChemDraw hexagon from the ChemOffice platform. Okay, I'm going to X this out, and I'm going to close Mole View. And now uh, I have you brought to Sidegress. So with Sidegress, we're going to do a new project. And I will keep it in the uh, desktop, my desktop. And I'll, uh, I'll save this new project as, uh, we'll call it uh, April 5. And I'll save that. All right, now, now I can begin to work. So what I'm going to do is uh, with April 5 over here, uh, we're going to do a chemical sample. I'm going to import a file. And then I'll go to the desktop and I'm going to look for that mole view. There it is. Now, I left this file format with .mol. And that's the one I just downloaded and we'll bring it in. There it is. Uh, the whole purpose of this video really is to show you you have access to mole view. An excellent... Uh, 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 platform in the public domain. And uh, one of the things I found out, I normally was working with something called ChemOffice, both ChemDraw and Chem3D within ChemOffice. But with the Mac, we're having difficulties apparently with three-dimensional uh, uh, views. 
Uh, it's not working very well with Mac, so that's why I do this. And I also like the idea that a beginning student can draw out a structure in 2D before going to 3D. So therefore, we bring it right in. Now watch what I'm going to do. First, with uh, Sidegrass, I have to uh, do an action called Beautify, comprehensive, just to clean it up a little bit. And uh, now it's ready to be processed. I normally don't work with ball and stick, so I'm going to change it to view atoms and bonds wireframe. That's what I'm mostly comfortable with. But I also, with that, I use uh, with uh, view, I also do uh, um, cylinders. That's another one I use quite a bit. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, take this and do an experiment. Uh, and of course, what I'm doing is creating videos here because I want to be able to refer to them uh, two, three weeks, five weeks from now. I work with several platforms. I work with uh, downloaded proteins from the uh, protein database online. And I do a lot of modeling of uh, various uh, drug candidates to active sites of uh, enzymes. Um, what I'm going to do here is a run. I'll say yes, we'll just keep that. And here, we'll do a uh, uh, confirmations, a list of minima, and we'll start that. And uh, let's get an idea of uh, how many confirmers it'll select. I see uh, number 8, 19. That's good for this purpose. I want to have a number of them uh, worth considering, 25. 29. Very good. The more of them, the better. Now, remember, in terms of a drug, the lowest energy shape, once you determine that, you could be doing uh, molecular mechanics on small organics, but normally molecular mechanics is good for angles, lengths, very important with uh, proteins, large molecules. With small molecules, organics, um, Generally, if you're going to do energetics, you want to compare one conformation, one shape to another, you want to do semi-empirical or ab initio calculations. I use uh, uh, AM1, PM3, and we'll show you that in other videos. And uh, yeah, quite a few, uh, quite a few. And now it's done. That's good. Very good. Now, what happens once you tell them you want a list? You can run a video on this. Now, first I'm going to rotate this a little. And you can always go back and begin to assess. You can see the chain over there is extended out. And uh, here's your heterocyclic ring. Nitrogen, of course, by convention is blue. Oxygen, red. Uh, carbons are gray in this case. Uh, this one ring has two pi bonds conjugated to each other, double, single, double. Okay, now, we can watch the movie. So I'm going to click uh, start over here. And you will see this vertical line. And what's happening, you're seeing various shapes, confirmations, as a function of potential energy. See, we're up to 41.42, 45. So quite a few confirma uh, confirmations, confirmers are showing up. And... Uh, of course, uh, a very high energy one, uh, we're up around. Now there's the lowest one, see? We were about 38, I'll stop this and backtrack. And uh, we there we are, somewhere around 38.6 kilocal per mole. This would be what's called the global minimum. Right now, that's the lowest energy shape. Now if that's a drug, you can't assume the lowest energy conformer is going to be the bioactive shape of the drug. See, that's the million dollar question. It might be uh, two, three, four, five kilocal per mole higher than the global minimum. And uh, if you have a rigid drug with very little flexibility, then you're seeing uh, the bioactive shape. There was a, uh, an enzyme, there is an enzyme, aldose reductase, and uh, that drew a lot of attention and still does uh, because that is a very active enzyme in diabetics and they can suffer from retinopathy. And uh, one of the first compounds I think put on the market, Pfizer and Sons, was sorbonyl, a rather rigid structure. 
So when you're looking at that, there's not much flexibility. You're seeing the active site demands of that, uh, what's called direct uh, inhibition, uh, inhibition uh, that's competitive. Uh, it, in other words, a, the substrates, uh, uh, it's, uh, the structure is very similar to the substrate and the shape, the conformation is very similar. There's different types of inhibition. You study that in biochem with enzymology. So anyway, uh, that would be the lowest energy shape. Now, if that were a drug, it may not necessarily be there. It could be that it's here. Now, researchers will split these into populations. So they'll group them according to energy to make things manageable. But that's a very nice feature. You get this um, video. And uh, then we can, of course, save this and uh, go back to it later on. But the importance uh, here of this video, my purpose is showing you how you can use the mole view to do a 2D sketch, make sure it's correct, uh, transport it over, make it 3D, save as uh, .mol, and then you can uh, export it right over to Cygress, bring it in and begin to do uh, different types of molecular modeling. Okay, this is video number three. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.